Oh, Canada. Everyone loves Canadians, right? Except for these guys. Only they are Canada. Part of the original Canada, as a matter of fact. Well, let me explain. Now, unlike with their southern neighbors of the United States, in Canada, one of the biggest points of contention when it comes to politics revolves around language, very similar to another country I've talked about here before. And although tensions regarding separatism have somewhat subsided in recent years, there was a point in time only a matter of decades ago when Canada was on the brink of splitting into two three or possibly even more smaller nations. So how could one of the most peaceful countries on the planet that consistently ranks among those with the highest life expectancies, higher standards of living, and most trusting populations have such a huge issue dividing their country in half? It has often been said that although Quebec, Quebec as they call it, lies geographically in North America, they have long had more of a European mentality when it comes to politics and culture, more so than any other former European colony. And this is primarily due to the linguistic divide between the inhabitants of Quebec and other North Americans. As everyone knows, the Spanish were the first Europeans to land in North America. Well, not really. And the French were the next to follow them in the exploration of this new land. Or not really? Well, the French did indeed provide some of the most renowned explorers of the New World after the landing of Columbus, especially in Northern America, and many French traders, hunters, and navigators began to settle near the Great Lakes and the Mississippi River as early as the mid-16th century, but most of the settlements were short-lived. In this new land stretching from the Atlantic through the continent down to the Gulf of Mexico, the overwhelming majority of settlers were single men, either those hoping to make their living in the New World, or priests who attempted to establish relations with and convert the local Native American population. Unlike many other parts of the Americas, the native population was not immediately subjugated under the colonial rule, with the French having established rather positive relations with many of the native tribes through missions and trading outposts, and it became extremely common for French settlers to marry native women, often through trading. Yeah, I know it's weird, but that was normal back then. And the offspring of such unions formed a unique community that would lay the groundwork for the French community of Canada, and to a lesser extent, the United States. This widespread, highly heterogeneous group of mixed-race people was scattered throughout North America, not only near the Great Lakes, but the prairie region of Canada as well, stretching outwards towards Saskatchewan and even Alberta, and many within the community intermixed with others of the same parentage and became a distinct ethnic group known as the Métis. And in fact, the term Métis actually has the same etymological origin with the Spanish word mestizo, also meaning mixed. So in more ways than one, although differences do exist, the Mati are essentially the mestizos of Northern America and the historical root of French colonial rule in the region. The Mati would clash with English-speaking migrants moving west in the 18th century in a conflict known as the Red River Rebellion, and the Mati found sympathizers in other French-speaking Catholic Canadians in Quebec, but eventually could not compete against the overwhelming numbers, and today are a notable minority in the region, with many being completely assimilated into the Anglophone Canadian culture. Arguably one of the first and most important French settlements in Canada was established in present-day Quebec City in 1541, but was quickly abandoned following harsh winters and mass starvation, very similar with what happened in the British in Jamestown. And it wasn't for another half-century that the French were successful in creating a European-style city in present-day Canada, and even longer still for any substantial number of colonists to begin establishing families, infrastructure, their own culture, and eventually their own dialect of the French language. The French descendants in this region began to form two distinct groups, the Quebecois in the west and the Acadians to the east in the French territory of Acadia, and both coexisted alongside smaller number of Métis and Amerindian groups up until the French and Indian War, or Seven Years' War, where the British took control of this region and expelled nearly the entire French population of Acadia, with the area becoming the provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. Today, many in the maritime provinces of Canada and even in the New England region of the United States still identify as Acadian, while those who migrated further south to Louisiana became known as Cajuns. So, in a way, the state of Louisiana is the brother or cousin of the province of Quebec, despite being located on the other side of the continent. 
Now, following the Seven Years' War and the cession of Quebec to England, the British could have made the decision to expel the remaining 100,000 French settlers in the region, or otherwise forcibly repress French culture and force them to become Anglicanized, but instead the British allowed the settlers, many of whom had been there for several generations, to stay. Although they did heavily encourage British settlers to settle in the region with little success. It was not until the late 1770s that any substantial Anglophone population began to form in Quebec when a modest group of loyalists fled the 13 colonies from the south. Although attempts were made by the British and Canadian governments to assimilate the Francophone inhabitants of Quebec in the maritime over the centuries, the fallout of the Red River Rebellion, along with the historical scars left through the expulsion of the Acadians, suppression of French culture in other parts of Canada, and general Anglo-French hostilities had still left a deep rift and extreme distrust between the Anglophone and Francophone inhabitants of Canada, despite being a part of the same nation. Ironically, by attempting to stamp out French culture in the region all those years prior, the British merely succeeded in adding fuel to the fire of French-Canadian nationalism, and had there been a more natural progression of power and culture in the region, it's very likely that Quebec could have become much more culturally integrated with the rest of Canada. The number of Canadians of French ancestry is difficult to ascertain, as many of French origins may simply choose to identify as ethnically Canadian on official government censuses, but needless to say, the percentage in nearly every province and territory is quite substantial. Outside of Quebec and New Brunswick, who have French speakers as 84 and 32 percent of their populations respectively, almost all other provinces have rates of 1 to 3 percent of those who speak French as a first language language, although additionally the number of those with at least some French ancestry is over 10% for nearly all Canadian provinces and territories, and when including those with some Métis heritage, this number increases even further, especially in the Prairie region and the Northwest Territories. Over the years, migration to Quebec from mainland France has been steady, but by and large the majority of Francophone inhabitants of Quebec, or over 5 million people, can trace their ancestors back to the original settlers of the 17th century at once called this vast region New France, as several genetic studies on the self-identified Quebecois population has shown limited genetic diversity, showing evidence of a strong founder effect, meaning they are descended from a small founding population. Interestingly, the migration patterns to Quebec do largely mirror that of mainland France, as opposed to neighboring Ontario or the rest of Canada, as rather than a focus on South Asian or Chinese immigrants in recent years, external immigration has historically been dominated by Southern European nations such as Italy and Portugal, and increasingly as of late, the Middle East and North Africa. The large surge in migration of former French colonies such as Morocco, Algeria, Haiti, or the Congo makes sense, as many who already speak French from these regions would more easily integrate into Quebec rather than the rest of Canada. Quebec does have a small minority of English speakers who come from a multitude of ethnic, religious, and cultural backgrounds, although in the past half century the population of Anglophones in Quebec has virtually stagnated and as a result has decreased its overall share of the population from 15% in 1950 to less than 8% today. Compare this to the next most spoken language in Quebec, Arabic, spoken by 2.3% of the population, meaning English is quickly in danger of losing status as a first language in the province. Even the proportion of bilingual French and English speakers has not changed much since the 1990s, plateauing around 40%, showing that there is little enthusiasm in the public at large to culturally integrate with the rest of Northern America. Statistics have shown that despite creating a ratio of nearly 10 to 1 in the province of Quebec when comparing French to English speakers, since 1970 over three-fourths of those who have moved out of Quebec are English speakers, showing a far higher propensity to leave. Although around three-quarters of Quebec's population are Francophone individuals of French ethnic origin, a very large amount of them may also have English, Irish, Italian, Breton, or even Basque ancestry as well. And over the years, these migrants have blended into Quebec society to become a sort of nation within a nation, leading to a precipitous rise in the desire for independence, leading to a referendum regarding an increase in sovereignty for Quebec in 1980, which failed, and a full-blown independence independence referendum in 1995, which was determined by an astonishingly thin margin of only one percentage point. 
Following this referendum over two decades ago, for the most part, tensions have somewhat cooled and the once fiery zeal for independence is dying down. But anyone who has recently visited Quebec or met an individual from the province can tell you that their rebellious attitudes concerning the federal government and the rest of the English-speaking world is still very much alive and well. Out of all the territories and provinces of Canada, polls have shown that Quebec is the most opposed to integration with and generally has the lowest overall views on the United States. Not too surprising seeing how France also tends to have some of the lowest views of Americans in all of Europe. But in all seriousness, Canada in the past century has had a much more tolerant atmosphere on linguistic minorities than their southern neighbor, as during World War I and II, the German language was nearly suppressed to extinction in the American Midwest and central Texas, and during the 60s, many Francophone communities in Louisiana and New England saw a new enforcement of the English language in their towns, and this could partially explain Quebec's apprehensiveness to join America as just another star on the flag and potentially lose their unique culture. Following the referendum of 1995, the response from Quebec seems very clear. If they were to remain a part of Canada, they were going to retain their own culture and not fall into the pattern of Anglicanization and assimilation that so many other regions and people of North America had succumbed to in the past couple centuries. Although there's nothing wrong with being a part of a larger culture or nation, the French-speaking inhabitants of Canada revel in pride over their own background and history, and it doesn't seem this trend will curb anytime soon. Please let me know your thoughts on the French Canadians, and for today's poll, let me know which larger nation the Francophones of Canada are a part of. And as always, thank you all for watching. This has been Mason.